Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing my Sephora savings event recommendations for spring 2023 and this video is not sponsored but many of you know I have an active relationship with Sephora. I'm part of the Sephora squad. It's just that these are recommendations I am making from the heart and I did my best to concentrate on the best new launches so far of 2023. I don't have any lipstick on because I figured this is the perfect time to try out these new Rare Beauty lip oils. They sent over this very generous package and I've seen these all over social and they seem to be a big hit and one thing that everybody keeps saying is that they stain the lips so the color is meant to be incredibly long lasting so let's try the shade serenity I wasn't sure what shade I was gonna pick, so I pulled out two of my favorite new lip liners, well, new discoveries for me. These I definitely recommend. This is the Buxom Powerline Plumping Lip Liner in the shade Savvy Sienna. And then the Sephora Collection lip liners are incredible. Creme de la Creme 04 is my favorite peachy nude. And then this is Sink or Suede, number 28. These are so creamy and they're retractable. So you never have to worry about a pencil sharpener, which I love. Creme de la creme, sink or suede. For shade Serenity, I'm thinking the Buxom lip liner will be the better shade option. I am going to overline just a little bit. And the reason I wanted to concentrate on newer releases is because I'm sure if I went back and watched all of my older Sephora savings event recommendations videos, nothing has really changed. My go-to tried and true favorites will always be recommendations. There are three main buckets to fill when shopping the Sephora savings event. The first bucket would be your restocks like mascara, foundation, SPF, body wash, deodorant, the products that you are constantly repurchasing and repurchasing throughout the year. You definitely want to take advantage of the savings. And then the second bucket would be splurge worthy items, luxury purchases, items that you've maybe held off on purchasing because you were waiting for a discount. Maybe it's a Tom Ford fragrance or a hair tool that's a little bit more expensive. And then the third category, the really fun category, the new shiny things, the new launches that always catch our eye. I haven't always been really good about waiting, but ever since I started putting myself on more of a low buy, no buy mentality, it makes it easier to hold out because you know that, okay, I'm not gonna purchase this right now just because it launched, but later on, whenever there's a discount, a sale, a savings event, then you can kind of go crazy and you're making the same purchases, but at least you are saving some money. I have a lot of products that have been sitting on my wish list and I have been waiting and just holding out for the savings event and that's what I will be picking up this time around. This is the best lip brush on a lip liner I have ever seen. It's really the selling point for me. So you can really blend this around. You can get really precise and sharp. Interesting. It doesn't feel like a normal lip oil. I think that's what's throwing me. It feels so strange. Hmm. It feels kind of glossy, like a glossy lipstick lacquer. <laughs> I don't really know how to describe it. I love the shine and I love how it just like plumps and hydrates the lips. I almost feel like this should be a different category because it does not feel like other lip oils. Like it doesn't really budge or move around or slip the same way. When I first applied it, I thought it was gonna go on a little bit thicker and I wasn't really sure, but now I really like the way it feels and we'll see how this color holds up, but so far I'm really liking it. And if you're not a fan of lip oils, I have plenty of great lip options here for you. So many of my favorite new products this year have been lip products, which I'm sure none of us really need, but these are incredible. They were also sent over complimentary from Summer Fridays. This is the new Lip Butter Balm, and I have two shades. This is Pink Sugar, and this is Cherry. Now these feel very different. They're a little bit thicker, not in a sticky tacky way, but it feels like a true lip balm that's just been melted down to a glossy lip treatment. These feel amazing and they do have a hint of color. They even have a hint of scent to them, which I kind of like. The pink sugar smells a little bit sweet. It's so faint, but you can just kind of pick it up as you're applying and it just 
gives it a luxurious experience. And then the cherry has a little tint as well. This one actually has a little bit more color to it. And it also has a slight cherry scent. If your lips are really dry and you love a good lip mask, this is kind of perfect throughout the day. It's perfect for throwing in your travel bag, throwing in your purse, taking on a summer vacation. This is poolside, beachside, very summery, and just kind of minimal makeup with high impact. They're both stunning on the lips. I love these. I have more hydrating lippies here. These are from YSL. This box was sent over a couple weeks ago and I was creating a little video where I swatched all of them and I was so impressed as I was trying on each shade how much I loved every single one. There are two different formulas in the box. We have the Candy Glaze Lip Gloss Stick and the Rouge Volupte Shine Lipstick Balm. There are a couple differences between them, but they're both shiny, hydrating. They have vitamin E, hyaluronic acid, pomegranate extract, 12-hour moisture lock in the Candy Glaze Lip Gloss Stick and then 8-hour hydration with the Volupte Shine. I always love YSL lipstick packaging. It looks like jewelry. It's so pretty and ornate. You can probably hear, but it is throwing it down outside. We have rain all week long. It's so depressing. I'm gonna throw this right on top. We still have plenty of color from the Rare Beauty Lip Oil, but we've lost a little shine, so I'm gonna top this off with the Nude Lingerie. I love these lipsticks so much. Every single color, but that looks so pretty. And they feel incredible. For a hydrating lipstick, wow. I forget how good these are. And they smell and taste a little bit sweet, almost like mango. If you're more a lipstick person versus a squeezy tube like the Summer Fridays, I would go with the YSL Candy Glaze Lip Balm Stick. I had even more lipsticks to share, but I'm gonna reel myself in because I don't want this to be, just become a lipstick video. But I do have to mention the new Hourglass lipstick because this is such a beautiful, creamy bullet formula. So this is going to be a little bit more substantial versus the YSL which goes on it just kind of melts it's very glossy and sheer and it's not going to give you long lasting color it might stain your lips but you're really not going to feel the lipstick on your lips for as long as with the hourglass this is more of a true hug your lips traditional bullet lipstick and I love them these are two of my favorite shades Tide 302 and Dahlia 318 this is the perfect pop of pink on the lip this is Tide, this is Dahlia. If these shades don't speak to you, I do have a YouTube video where I swatched and demonstrated every single shade on my lips. So I will link it down below in case you'd like to check it out, but I love the formula. If you're looking for just a nice luxurious feeling bullet lipstick, these are amazing. They're pretty pricey because it is hourglass. So if you can save 20, 15% off, then I think it's definitely worth it. Moving on to complexion products, I have two new foundations here. These are my two top two favorite new formulas. Of course, there are plenty of incredible foundations available at Sephora. If you'd like to see a best foundations at Sephora video, let me know, I can do my best. But they're very different, so that's why I went with these two. The Makeup by Mario, what is this, Surreal Skin? Yes, the Surreal Skin Foundation. This is shade 11N, I really like this. And what's really sad is I'm pretty sure I filmed at least two YouTube videos that I don't think ever made the cut. So I'm not sure if I've ever really talked about this formula before, but I really like it. It's buildable. It maintains the perfect amount of glow. I don't find this to be too heavy, too dewy, doesn't look super greasy later in the day for me. I think it's kind of the perfect everyday summer weight foundation. So I love this for summer and it's a little bit more natural. I think you're better off using the smallest amount possible when it comes to this formula, but I love it. And then I also really like the new YSL All Hours Foundation. This was a long time favorite, but then they recently changed the formula. It has SPF 30. I have shade MN4. Love this foundation. I kind of remembered why I used to talk about it so much and it was kind of my go-to. This is more of your perfecting long wear special occasion foundation. So if you have an event, a wedding, you're taking photos of yourself, a date night, where you really want to perfect the skin, look your best, have it last all night long, but you don't want it to be really heavy and cakey, this is amazing. It looks so beautiful on the skin. And my favorite new concealer so far in 2023 has been the Givenchy Prisma Libra Skin Caring Concealer. I love this. I have the shade C105 
It's incredible. I love the coverage. I love the finish. It doesn't crease. Suddenly, it's like every brand has cracked the code. No more terrible, crusty, dusty, crepey concealers because it feels like every single new formula I've tried lately, and I might be jinxing myself, commentator's curse, but they've all been really incredible. So this immediately went to the top drawer, and now my top drawer is overflowing with incredible concealers, and I can just kind of pull out whichever one I feel like wearing for the day. What I like about the Givenchy is that it maintains a really decent amount of brightness, but it's kind of medium whatever you need it to be. I feel like if I want a light coverage day, this works. If I want a fuller coverage day, this works. It's not quite as heavy duty as the Pat McGrath Labs, and I would say it's maybe slightly more luminous than the Charlotte Tilbury, which I also really love. So far, so good with this concealer. Highly recommend. And I'm excited to try one of the new formulas, the new Valentino concealer during the savings event. That I will be picking up soon. We really can't talk about complexion without talking about sun protection. This is not new. I, In fact, I believe I picked this up during the holiday savings event based on a recommendation, but it's relatively new to my collection. And then this brand I think is new at Sephora. It's Soleil Toujours. It's a Mineral Ally Daily Defense Sunscreen. It has SPF 50. I tried this so randomly on accident the other day. I think I was about to walk Jazzy outside and I thought, okay, let me throw on a little sunscreen because I need to get better. I'm trying to incorporate sunscreen into my daily routine when I'm not leaving the house, even just a short walk outside because I'm noticing some freckles and some sunspots on my shoulders. So anyways, that's the backstory. It was sitting underneath the vanity in a giant pile of mess. I just happened to pick this up and I have tried a couple other products from the brand. They had sent over a mist sunscreen as well, which I tried a few weeks back. I liked the mist, but what I love about this sunscreen, why I'm talking about it today, SPF 50, but check this out. Do you see that color? It's peach instead of white. And this is not meant to be like a tinted foundation skin tint replacement. This is just sunscreen. So when you rub it in, it shears out and it kind of loses that tint, but you don't have that extreme white cast left on the skin. So this is really the perfect sunscreen for all skin tones. You know, if you have a deeper skin tone and you apply one of those white sunscreens, you're gonna see a white cast left on your face. But with this one, no white cast. And it's basically transparent. And then this is kind of a classic cult favorite product. A lot of people who love skincare and love SPF swear by this. It's the Shiseido Clear Sunscreen Stick with SPF 50. Alexa Johnson, also known as Glowpedia, who's on Sephora Squad with me, she has recommended this and I immediately added this to my cart and it's incredible. It's completely clear and it doesn't disturb your makeup. So if I wanted to, I could just apply this sunscreen all over my face as a touch up and nothing would budge underneath. So this is kind of perfect and portable. Great for pool days, for beach bags, for any sort of summer vacation beach trips any summer travel plans where you're going to be outside, this is so easy to just throw anywhere and it's clear. If you've been curious to try the new Rare Beauty highlighters, I think it's the perfect time. I love them. Highly recommend, 10 out of 10. I love every single shade. This is Enlighten, it's a little bit more pearly. And this is Mesmerize, it's a little bit more pink but all four are beautiful and they are so bright and blinding. I actually think these are a pretty reasonable price at $25 because it's gonna last you such a long time, but the packaging is really cute. The little kind of peachy pink pill packaging and it's such a high impact product. It's more of a light, silky, but kind of drier powder texture. Let me tap a little bit of this on. Applying this on top of the Shiseido stick might be might actually look really pretty. I was gonna say it might be a disaster, but actually it might amplify the highlighter even more. It's not super creamy to the touch, but I love it. And it almost goes on like a very fine, light veil on top of the skin. I don't think it accentuates texture or pores at all, especially if you kind of rub and massage it in or just tap it in with your fingers kind of marries with the makeup underneath. Beautiful for summer. If you're doing really luminous skin, maybe a lighter eyeshadow look. I'm really late to the game here, but the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand in the shade Pinkgasm. I saw this all over the place. I had one actually sitting in one of my drawers for months. 
didn't touch it because I had a lot of open cream blushes and I kind of figured I'm sure it's pretty but it's not going to be so much better than everything that I already have open so I'm not going to touch it. I finally caved and now I keep this in the top drawer and I've been using this just about every single day. It's foolproof and that's what I love about it. You can't apply too much. I mean, it does get a little messy. I don't love this packaging. A little bit spilled out earlier, but I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit more. This is the blush that I'm wearing. Could just be a coincidence, but I feel like every time I wear this blush, it's a great makeup day. I always love my makeup whenever I wear this. And it's it shouldn't be different, right? It shouldn't be such a crazy standout product. There are a lot of glowy blushes on the market, but there's something about it I don't really know what it is. It's kind of hard to explain why this is so much better than everything else. But I, ju I th just think it is. It's kind of light. It has a little color, but not too much. It could just be used as a cream highlight, but I just use it as a blush. And then I always put a little bit right on the top of the bridge of the nose. And I blend it in a little bit and it lo just looks so pretty and light and fresh faced and happy. I can't get over it. Hands down my favorite bronze goddess glowy skin all over your body product of summer 2023 is this Patrick Ta face and body major glow all over glow balm. I have the shade she's on vacation. I haven't checked in a while. I'm hoping this will be back in stock for the savings event. I saw the second shade was back in stock. It's a little bit lighter. I also picked up this body brush, which does not have incredible reviews on the Sephora website, but I have found it to be really nice. People said that it shed hairs. I haven't had that experience. I think this brush is great, but you don't need this brush. You can use any body brush, any makeup brush, but this major glow all over glow balm is so pretty. Teeny tiny bit is all you need. It has a balmy texture. It has a little color to it and it just leaves your skin looking so bronze, beautiful, and hydrated. I'm risking it all right now because I'm wearing a white top. It does transfer a little bit, not a ton, and it depends where you apply it and how much you apply. As long as you go in with just a small amount, you should be fine. And if I was wearing like a tube dress or something where my entire chest was exposed, I feel like I could apply this relatively liberally all over the chest and the shoulders and it's not going to get all over the place. You want to consider time and place whenever you apply this, but definitely for certain occasions. This isn't an everyday product. I don't want it to get all over my necklace, but you don't have to play it super safe. I mean, it's not a really messy product because it's not meant to be a body bronzer. It just does have a hint of color to it, but you see that looks really nice. Kind of evens out the skin tone, gives you a little color, a little hydration, and then there's a little sheen to it. I do have one other new product here. I wasn't going to talk about this yet because I haven't even unboxed them, but this is the new Pat McGrath Labs Divine Bronzer. I ended up purchasing two shades. This is Desert Glow and Bronze Dawn. One of these is supposed to be more matte. The other one has more of a golden sheen, so I figured I would try both finishes. I love the exterior packaging is really pretty. I might as well go ahead and unbox these. What are we waiting for? I was actually waiting so that I could unbox them and take pictures and I didn't want to mess them up. Ooh, I like the little crown design. The pan looks a little bit smaller than I anticipated. I don't know why. I thought the pan would be larger inside the compact. It's not a bad size. This is the powder bronzer I've been using in the top drawer. It's the Dior Forever Natural Bronze. So this has nine grams. Oh, this has nine and a half grams. So deceiving. I wonder why. It, maybe it's an optical illusion because this is a circle in a square and this is a circle in a circle. Because when I look at these pans, and I mean, this one's definitely larger, but it must be flat. This looks like it's larger than this, but actually this has a little bit more. This is Bronze Dawn. This is Desert Glow. I love how I'm just layering all of these products. My makeup is going to look outrageous after this. I'm going to have to wash my face between the sunscreen, the blush, the bronzer. It's pretty dark. 
not too dark, but it definitely has warmth and it definitely has color payoff. It's not really fair to give a review, but so far, initial impression that it went on really smooth, it blended really nicely, was not patchy at all. Desert Glow, this is really pretty. This is Desert Glow and Bronze Dawn. There's not a huge difference tone-wise or intensity-wise, but the Desert Glow has a little bit of a sheen, whereas the other one is more matte. If you're in the market for a powder bronzer, this might be the perfect time to try the new Pat McGrath Labs formula. I will be testing these in a full makeup routine very soon. One of those staples that I cannot resist talking about because I just use it all the time is the KP Bump Eraser Body Scrub from First Aid Beauty. I don't know, I've lost count of how many tubes of this I've gone through and I always go with the big tube. It's incredible, it's the best body scrub. Does not smell amazing, but it has physical as well as chemical exfoliants. Glycolic acid, lactic acid, and then it has this pumice microcrystal, colloidal oatmeal to help soothe the skin. I knew there was something soothing in it as well, but it's perfect for just sloughing off that first layer of dead skin. It leaves your skin feeling silky smooth. This is amazing, of course, if you have KP, but also if you are an avid sunless tanner like I am, it's incredible before a fresh sunless tan. A few weeks ago, I finished my final Color Wow Money Mask, so I replaced it with this Kerastase Discipline Mask Keratine Morpho Keratine Mask. I also really enjoy the Kerastase Deep Hydrating Masks. This one is incredible. The entire line of products is really great, actually. I used this the last few times I styled my hair, and it just gives such a huge boost of moisture, and it leaves my hair feeling really silky smooth and just shiny and healthy and not color treated and heat damaged. So huge fan of this mask. There are probably two or three Kerastase hair masks at Sephora that I highly recommend 12 out of 10. I've used just about every single mask from Kerastase. They're all really good, but for color treated damaged hair, there are a few real standouts. I will make sure I link all of my favorite products down below. This is another product from Kerastase. This is the Elixir Ultim. It's a hydrating hair oil serum and and I discovered this, I'm sure I've used it in the past, but I discovered it recently because I received a small sample size bottle, or it was more like a travel size bottle, and I started using that, and then I fell in love with it. It is such a generous size for an oil treatment. Usually oil treatments are maybe half as much, but they're closer to probably a third or maybe a fourth of the size of this bottle. So I love the fact that it's so big, and you can use this so many different ways. So you can use it as an oil treatment, which is where I'll saturate the scalp, kind of brush it through the hair, and then let it sit for a couple hours before I shampoo. You can use it before styling. You can also use it after styling. You don't need much. Teeny, 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 tiny bit. I would say half a pea. You can use it to refresh the ends if you have any dry bits. Like my ends get kind of dry, these front pieces. If you use a full pump, then it might actually weigh your hair down, but it has a really great combination of oils, including argan oil. Some oils are too heavy, they won't actually penetrate the hair. You think you're doing yourself a service, but it's not really doing anything, it's just sitting on top of the hair, which is why I love it so much, because you will truly feel a difference. And see, it still feels pretty light, except now it's shiny. This is still my favorite hot tool at the moment. I kind of go between two. I love the T3 wands and the curling iron. So if I'm going to curl my hair, I'll usually use either the one and a half inch barrel wand or the one and a quarter inch barrel curling iron from T3. And then I still really like my L'Oreal Pro Steam Pod. I straightened using the Steam Pod earlier today and it looks so smooth and it helps prevent damage with your hair because it's supposed to give you like 90% less damage. And I have noticed a difference now that I've been using this for several months. My hair feels a lot healthier than it used to and I have less breakage. And I think it has to do with the steam. I honestly thought it was gimmicky myself. I didn't understand how the steam would have any impact on the hairstyle, but it does. There's a little bit of steam that it lets out as you're styling your hair because you have to fill the little water tank and I can use it on the lowest possible heat setting. So that also helps prevent damage or at least lessen the damage. So this I use on 350, which is the lowest of three heat settings. If you're somebody who has to use a hot tool, 
you're better off going with something, anything that's going to help lower the damage. The steam pod works. I am planning more fragrance content around the Sephora savings event, whether that's a dedicated recommendations video or maybe a shopping vlog because there are a few new launches that I've not smelled yet. Haven't decided, let me know what you'd like to see down below, but there are a few that we have to talk about and this one we have not discussed at all. This is the new launch from Juliet Has a Gun. It's called Lust for Sun. This was sent to me complimentary several weeks ago. Before the launch, I got to try this fragrance and it is incredible. Takes me on a bit of a roller coaster right away though, because when you first spray it, or when I first spray it, it's a little bit like, oh, like yes, I really like that. It's very clean and fresh and solar. Once you let it dry down a little bit on the skin, the coconut comes through and it is the most beautiful, fresh coconut. Ylang Ylang, coconut, vanilla, and musk in the dry down. It's so summery. I would say this is the perfect casual everyday summer fragrance. Smells like golden hour in a bottle. It's an elegant tropical fragrance. It's not just a fruit splash, super floral and fruity and sweet, like the bottle might suggest. Another one of my favorite new launches that leans kind of tropical with a hint of coconut is the Valentino Born in Roma Intense, or I think it's Intensa. It's not overly intense. This isn't a moody, heavy, dark fragrance. I can see myself wearing this daytime. In fact, I do wear it daytime. And I've been grabbing this so much lately. Vanilla, jasmine, it smells incredible. This is a little juicier, a little sweeter, a little bit more sensual. It's not gonna be the most unique fragrance available at Sephora, but if you like designer perfumes that are no-brainers, you know, they have mass appeal because they just smell really good, I think you will love this. Those are all of my new recommendations from Sephora, all of the new products that I love. The lip oil it held up really nicely. It could be a combination of the lip liner and the lip oil. I love them both. So definitely recommend the lip oil, even though we topped it off with the YSL, we kind of cheated. And just because we don't have any shine left, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the pink sugar from Summer Friday so you can see it. So easy, curved applicator, so it just kind of hugs the lip. I love this. It feels incredible. It feels like a lip mask and it gives you a little shine, a little color, a little shine. It's perfection. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions, your recommendations down below in the comment section. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.